Miopta Optica 6. If you are fans of my channel, you know that I really love the Miopta Optica 6 3 to 18 by 50 in first focal plane. Pew 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 pew. However, this is not a 3 to 18 in the first focal plane. This is a 1 to 6 in the second focal plane. So technically, this should have much less work to do glass wise. It also means that the illumination should be a little bit brighter. But this is as bright as it gets, and down here in a fairly dark environment, it's more than adequate for most people, I would say. It's certainly more than adequate for myself. But, pew, if you are looking for something with brighter illumination in the in-between times, when you're outside, let's say, pew, this is not going to be for you. If you are interested in buying a second focal plane 1 to 6 that has brighter illumination capacity, stay tuned till the end of the video because I make some very good comparisons showcasing some that do. What are some things that we can take away from this scope down here real quick? Pew 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 pew! Before we get into the unboxing. Well, not only is the illumination kind of weak, but the fisheye at 1x is massively annoying. And I will be showcasing that very soon. But first, let's do a real quick unboxing. Pew pew! Pew pew! I already did a very detailed unboxing of the Miopta Optica 6 3 to 18 by 50 and a side-by-side -side between that and the by 56 version. So if you want to find out more about the unboxing of what you would expect in a Miopta, go check out those videos. I will link one of them in the description below. But just know that the boxes are pretty good and they're made to a fairly high quality standard. And it's nice to know that because these scopes come in around $600 plus depending on where you're buying it from. So it's nice to know that at least the scope won't get completely destroyed if it was to, let's say, fall off the back of a truck. This particular scope has the 223 Red Dot BDC reticle, which I'm not completely opposed to, but it's not going to be for everybody. The one good thing that Miopta does offer is a ton, a ton of reticle options. So if you're not a big fan of this reticle, you could get, it's like six other different types there, there's a lot. Unfortunately, they seem to be having a bit of an issue with supply and demand. They seem to be out of stock in a lot of different websites. So if you are really looking for one of these, keep your eyes open because you might not necessarily get what you're looking for. Anywho, starting with the fast focus eyepiece, this thing is rock solid. The outside is very smooth, so you really do need to clamp down on it with your fingers to get enough traction to actually turn it. But that's a good thing because... An eyepiece should be set and then forget in most cases. But it is very tightly damped and very tight when you pull it out and wiggle it. There's almost no movement to this, and I really quite like it. Next up is the magnification control, which goes from its minimum to maximum in just about 180 degrees, so completely standard. One nice thing that Miopta does offer is that little cattail with a couple different positions that you can point it wherever you want. Well, not wherever you want. There's only a couple of positions, but it's really nice to have the option either which way. If you don't want to use the cattail, that rubberized texture that they run on this with a little thumb ramp is also quite nice. I'm a bigger fan of more aggressive knurling because I find... I just get a better purchase on it. If my hands are a little sweaty or greasy or have lotion on them or something like that, that rubberized texturing does get a little bit slick, but that's the only real negative. Depending on who you are, you might love it, you might hate it. I myself, I don't mind it, but it could be improved. Moving on to the battery compartment for the illumination control. We have a very standard looking three prong spring and a three dimple base pad in the bottom. This is the exact same battery compartment that you find on very low tier optics, like $150, $200, and up to about four or $500 typically. Now, despite the fact that that compartment's found a much less lesser expensive optics, I've never had a problem with them. So I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say that it's going to be fine. One thing I do like is that the battery cover, as you can see, is lower profile than the actual knob itself, and it does require a coin to loosen. I am of the mindset that if you do have a knurled section that is the same size of the diameter of the illumination control, there is going to be that slight chance that it can come loose on you. I know this from experience when it's come loose on me when I don't have a perfect purchase on there. I'm actually grabbing the cap to the battery compartment and I twist it off. Not great when you're in a hurry and you need it. As far as how the knob itself feels, it is exceptionally nice. It is very tight and rigid, and those detents are deep, and the spring is strong. So once this thing is in the control where you want it, it is never coming out unless you turn it. Another great physical aspect of the scope are the turrets, which are capped, which they should be in a second focal plane with a BDC. Set it and forget it. But once you remove those caps, to adjust them, the, fat, the sound, the 
feel oh they're exceptional exceptional turds just as good as they as i found on every other miyapta product that i've reviewed so far they have a wonderful detent a wonderful sound and a wonderful feel so let me try to make that live for you a little bit right now There is a tiny bit of wiggle that you can see with the cap, but other than that, they are absolutely fan-fucking-tastic. Unfortunately, all these amazing controls come at a cost, and that cost is going to be weight. On my scale, you see it comes in at about 29 ounces, but this does include a set of steel rings. But I just so happen to have the exact same set of rings on the side, which come in just over 6 ounces. So on my scale, this scope weighs in around 23 high 20 ounces but on their website and everywhere else it comes in at around 20 ounces so take that for what it's worth my scale is not calibrated so for all i know this thing really is 20 ounces but nevertheless that is still quite heavy to pull out another very heavy second focal plane 26 lpvo the vortex viper pst gen 2 tops my scale at 23.5 ounces and on their website they claim 22.7, but it does have that throw lever on there, so I'll split the difference at about 23. So that means that my scale is pretty freaking close to being on par with what it actually is, about 10%. Nevertheless, this Miopta is not a lightweight. Is the weight going to be a problem for you? Only you can answer that question. For myself, given how great these controls feel and how it feels physically, it feels like you could take this thing and drive nails with it. For me, that's a win. And I would almost be willing to give up the weight if it performed optically flawlessly. So without further ado, let's get behind this thing and really run it through its paces to see if it is worth not only its extra weight, but the extra price point as well. The 223 BDC reticle might not be for everybody, but like I said, there are a ton of other options if you can find them. Talking about some technical specs real quick, the field of view claimed at 1x is 109.5 feet, and all the way here at 6x is going to be 18.9 feet. Exit pupil is, I would say, kind of on the smaller side, 10 millimeters down low and 4 millimeters up high, which is a little bit on the average. A couple things we can talk about here and take away is that there's 3.9 inches of eye relief and that is fixed from 1x to 6x, which is why when we change the magnification, there's no distortion or changes that happen to the view looking through the scope. There's also not that much scope body being shown, which is something that I am a big fan of. However, the illumination here on full is anemic at best. It's barely noticeable. And when the lights go off, once you come off the second from the highest, it really gets to the point where you're not going to be able to really use it to the, with the naked eye. Not everyone is going to agree or disagree when it comes to illumination. Some people don't care about illumination as long as the reticle is easy to pick up and see. And this 223 reticle is very easy for the eye to pick up and draw to the center. I quite like it in that regard, but I still do like a little bit brighter illumination if it is an option. And as you will see, when I make my comparisons, there are a lot of other options that offer way better illumination for less than this price and equal to this price. Because these turrets are in MOA, I cannot do a full tracking test on it. However, we can check for slop in the erectors and see if it's going to return to zero with a couple of elevation twists. I have the reticle lined up to my target as good as possible here. And you'll see as I increase the elevation, it does track more or less in line, and there is zero play to the erectors, which is great. So not only are the turrets exceptionally good sounding and feeling, but they also work quite well when you actually have to use them. One thing I forgot to mention was that target at 41 yards did look exceptionally good through this glass. And that's one other thing that we're going to talk about right now. Despite the fact that there is some fisheye, which I'm going to be showing you, there's also a lot of sharpness and clarity to this glass. It's, it's a weird tipping scale. On one hand, it is really impressive. On the other hand, it's a bit of a letdown below 1.5x. Again, this is going to be something that, for many of you, you're not really going to even notice, let alone probably care about. 
but for I myself, fisheye is like an absolute deal breaker, especially on a 1x. If there's some fisheye to a 2, 3, or 4x, I'm not going to notice it as much or care about it as much because I'm not going to use it as dynamically as I would a 1x. I like my 1x to be nice, flat, clear, and crisp. This thing is very clear and crisp, but there's just a little bit more fisheye than I care about. It's a little bit harder to pick up on camera than it is to get behind it in real life and see it, but just know that it is there, and it is the one thing about this scope that I really dislike, as well as the illumination. That's as good as it gets out here, folks. And yes, that is a brand new CR2032 battery. It's just disappointing. But let's go on to something that's a little bit better. Like the sharpness, clarity, and resolution here at 6x at our 400-yard brick building. The reticle is very nice and sharp, and that brick building does look a little bit off. It doesn't look as fine-tuned as I could possibly get it. And you might be going, well, see, you know, you can adjust the eyepiece and probably get a little bit more out of it. Well, you know what, smartass? You know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to adjust the eyepiece for all of you to see if I can get a little bit more sharpness and clarity out of the image while still maintaining a very sharp looking reticle. This is what you're supposed to do, folks. That eyepiece is supposed to be adjusted to your eye independently from person to person for the reticle. And every once in a while, you can just tweak it in between the image and the reticle to get it perfect. You might have noticed that my fingers slipped off the back of the eyepiece because it is very slick and very hard to turn, which is something that, again, I really do appreciate if you're going to have a fast focus eyepiece. I do manage to probably find a better balance between the reticle and the image, and boy howdy, it does look pretty damn good. We were also blessed with excellent conditions. It was the middle of the summer, it was very bright, sun was high up, and very minimal cloud cover, yet not that much miraging. So it was basically as good as you could possibly hope for in conditions like this. And the scope performed as good as possible. Let's focus on the 900 yard power tower and now test that exit pupil. They claim it's at 10 millimeters at the minimum and four at the maximum. And when I mean minimum maximum, I mean magnification. So four millimeter at the top end is pretty standard across the board for a second focal plane one to six LPVO. And you can see it's pretty much on par. One area where it does perform quite well is that the image is quite stable. Both the target downrange, the tower, and the reticle remain quite sharp even into the shadows, which is a great thing. Some scopes fail this, some, some scopes perform just like this, which it should perform like this quite good. At 3x, again, it's a very good performance, and you can just see the illumination when you get into the shadows. Again, that is at maximum brightness with a brand new battery. This is performing about average. Again, roughly where it is. On 1x, this should be about 10 millimeters. It seems pretty good, and it is pretty good, but you could see just how much that image is shifting as we pan the camera side to side. That is that fisheye that I'm talking about. You can't really get away from it. And that is probably the best representation of how bad it is, because when you are behind it, any sort of shift, left or right or up and down, or even panning fast, will have that much distortion to it. Let me make the distortion and that 10 millimeter exit pupil live for you a little bit more in a more dynamic sense. Here at our 50 yard range, you can very clearly see a couple of things. One, we don't have that much leeway off center as far as our eye box is concerned, and the distortion on that berm is immense. Going up and down, left to right, in and out, you will notice that there is a massive amount of distortion, a, a la fisheye, at 50 yards. And it's going to be as noticeable as that closer and farther away it's almost unusable for me like i said it makes me motion sick and that is not something that i am i'm a big fan of i don't like that most other scopes that i've had where there's that much distortion usually about 1.5 or 2x the distortion is gone here at 2x you can still see that there's a fair amount of distortion there but the exit pupil is already seeming to be a little bit smaller than usual Increasing the magnification to 4x, it's about on par with what I've seen in a lot of other 1-6s, and all of the distortion at this point is gone. Again, this is a fairly average performance, as is here with 6x. With a 4mm exit pupil, it's basically on par with a TR25, a PST Gen 2, and a Stryker HD. So, not bad at all. The last section before we get into our side-by-side -side comparisons is going to be low-light performance. This is later on in the evening, again, middle of the summer. Illumination here is on full. Even here, it's like just barely noticeable. There is a very slight image shift when you 
go from minimum to just above minimum, but it's very similar with what I found with the Night Force Attacker, and that is part of the design. Don't ask me why, don't ask me how, it just is. I guess they need to leave some tolerances in there. As far as the low light performance on this thing, it's not bad at all. You can see that we don't really lose that much brightness to the image. So again, a decent performance. Yes, everybody's favorite part, or at least it is for me, the side-by-side -side comparisons. On the left will be the Optica 6, and on the right will be its competitor. And the first up is going to be the Primary Arms SLX Nova. This is, again, a 1 to 6 second focal plane by 24 Wonder LPVO. No physical controls on the Nova aren't on par with the Optica 6, but neither is the price. The Nova comes in less than half the price. You could typically find a Nova for... I want to say like low 300s average, but every once in a while they pop up on sale, or if you're a military LEO first responder, you can get them for like high 200s, sometimes even with a mount. And for that price, if you are on a budget, or if you're not sure if you're going to like an LPVO like this, it's the one to get. Excellent, excellent reticle, excellent illumination. The glass sharpness and clarity is exceptional. The only thing that I have a problem with is that the image stability when you go side to side is slightly off center on the reticle. It does lose a, a fair amount of sharpness to both the image and the reticle. But beyond that, it is pound for pound the best second focal plane 1 to 6 LPVO on the market today. But there are some caveats. Like I had mentioned, the image stability is definitely one of them. And as much as I say it is the best budget one out there, I would still rather save up and buy the next, well, not the next one, a couple of other scopes down the line where I'll make a comparison. I'll talk about it then. But a couple of side-by-side -side notes to take on this. The field of view claimed on the Nova is 120 to 20 feet, whereas on the Mi Opta, we have 109.5 to 18.9. So the Nova is going to have a larger field of view. The Nova also has a slightly larger view looking through it, which is actually pretty impressive because the Miopta does have a very good view looking through it. Another area where the Nova is going to be a better choice is its weight. It's 17.9 ounces, but it's about a half inch longer. Big whoop. Exit pupil on these two are going to be comparable. The Miopta is 10 to 4, whereas with the Nova, it's 10.6 to 3.8. Basically, as near as makes a difference, they're identical. The same thing with their eye relief. 3.9 inches for the Optica and 4 inches for the Nova. If you're unsure about what to get between these two, well, first off, you're going to be able to find the Nova basically everywhere, whereas the Miopta is going to be, again, hit or miss. But again, personal preference is a thing. External controls, overall feel goes to the Optica. They're supposed to be made in the U.S., but there's no real, like, I haven't found any concrete evidence of that. They're not made in the Czech Republic. Or maybe that most of the parts are, which is why they've had supply chain issues with the war in, in Ukraine. Who knows? But between these two, well, well, between all of these comparisons, it's going to be up to you and what budget you're going to actually be able to afford. Next up, going into the slightly higher budget above that, is going to be the Burris RT6. This is yet again another 1-6 to six second focal plane LPVO. And in fact, uh, all of these are going to be second focal plane 1-6 to six LPVOs. I'm not going to bring in anything with lesser or more magnification or in first focal plane because odds are you're probably on the fence with other second focal plane 1-6s. to sixes. Between these two, what can you expect between the Burris and the Miopta? Well, again, the Burris is going to be about half the price. You could find them for low to mid 300s, sometimes with a pepper mount, which is not ideal, but the Burris is going to be, again, about 3 ounces lighter, about the same length, about the same field of view, but guess what? The RT6 claims a much larger exit pupil, going from 10 millimeters with the Optica to 11.5 on the minimum, and on the maximum, you got 4 millimeters with the Optica and 5.2 with the RT6, which means you're going to have a much more forgiving eye box with the RT6 and a little bit more forgiveness to the image as a whole. Also, it has much less distortion at 1x. There is a very minor amount of fisheye with the Burris, but nowhere near as bad as with the Optica. As far as the eye relief, 
The Optica is actually going to be the better choice. It's got more eye relief, but yet a larger view looking through it. So the scope is farther away from our eye, yet it has a much larger view. Whereas the RT6 is 3.3 to 4 inches. It's going to be variable. So to find that sweet spot, you're going to have to play around with it a little bit more. As far as the image quality goes, they're both really good. Uh, I think we'd be splitting hairs to say one is better than the other. But if I did have to give the edge to one, I think it's going to be the RT6. It looks exceptional. Even though the conditions look identical and the position at where I'm sitting is identical, these were not filmed on the same day. To just take a look at those targets. They did not get changed from one volley to the next. They maintained those targets. If I had to give an edge to one, I'd probably give it to the RT6. But again, that could just have been a slight camera setting or just the cloud coverage in the sky. It's as simple as that. But again, both of them are quite good. I'd be splitting hairs to pick one versus the other. One area where I do prefer the Optica over the RT6 is going to be with the reticle options. I might not care for the 223 as much as I would prefer maybe like a K dot or a more simple duplex. Whereas with the RT6, that floating donut in the middle is not for everybody. It's not for me, even though I have used it quite successfully. I do prefer posts like at 3, 6, and 9 with what we see with the Optica, at least here with the 223 reticle. There really is a lot to unbox between the Optica and all the comparisons that we're going to be making here today. But between the RT6, there are some pros and cons that would lead me towards one versus the other. I think the more cohesive package is going to be the RT6, especially with that nice, sweet, half-price discount. All right, I'm pulling out all the stops. The Vortex Viper PST Gen 2 has been a benchmark of mine for a very long time. The first time I got one to review, I liked it so much I waited patiently to pick up one on a very good steal, and a good friend of mine had sold me his for a very, very good price, and now I have it in my inventory for life. I will never get rid of it. I might not use it as far as put it on a, a, a gun and keep it there permanently. It'll float from one setup to another, and constantly come into the rotation for comparisons because for the roughly $500 that you could find these PST Gen 2s for, they are basically perfect. They are heavy. They are heavy. So if uh, you want to pump some iron while you're running around with your rifle, the PST Gen 2 is automatically going to be the choice for you. But keep in mind, the Optica is also a porker as well. So it really does make this battle of the titans. As far as what you can expect, the unknown made Optica 6 comes in again around that $600 price point. The Filipino made PST Gen 2 comes in around $500, sometimes less, sometimes more. Again, depends on who you're buying it from, when you're buying it and the whole nine yards. Illumination absolutely goes to the PSD Gen 2. Reticle, I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that a wash because, again, you can get different reticles for the Optica. You can't really get any new reticles for the PSD Gen 2, which is a huge, huge uh, a ball drop by Vortex. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to put a new reticle inside of an old scope and then reissue it to the market and then have everyone want to buy your scope again. I love the PSD Gen 2, however, and the reticle, I will make do with it, all things, all, all joking aside. From a technical standpoint, however, that is where you will see the PST Gen 2 pull ahead. It might be a little bit heavier, but not by much. It's about an inch longer, which is you know neither here nor there, especially with the added weight, but it's got three feet larger field of view at its minimum and the exact same at its maximum. But for whatever reason, I could not find, or at least I don't think I found, the correct exit pupil size for the PST Gen 2. The, the couple sources that I found claimed it was 24 millimeter at 1x, but 4 millimeter at its maximum. I don't think it's 24 millimeter at 1x, even though I know it is quite large because it's very easy to get behind the PST at any magnification in almost any position. But it just seems a little off to me. I know I can go downstairs and find it in one of my boxes because it's completely buried right now because of the move. And I could hang up to a light and look at it at a table and focus it and measure it. I'm not going to do that right now. But I do believe that the PST is far easier to get behind. It's also got a much more stable image, much better illumination, better warranty, very good company dealing with Vortex. It's the clear winner between these two. And you're saving a little bit over $100 buying it. That's all fine and dandy, C, but let's compare it with some more expensive options. Well, I'm going to throw into the rotation the Delta Striker HD 1-6x24. I usually go between this and the Credo HX because they're basically as near as makes no difference the exact same optic. They're both made in Japan. They're both about eight to $850. They're both 1-6x24 in the second focal plane. Reticle choices are going to be different between them. I'm not the biggest fan of the reticle on the Striker, 
but again, it would more than more than make do, especially if you're going to be doing a battle zero of like 50 or 200 yards or 36, 300. Then all those little hash marks underneath it, you just figure out where you have to hold at whatever distance and you're good. As far as illumination, very clearly to the striker, it is exceptional. Glass quality, again, to the striker. It does have a little bit of blurring to the edge, but I don't believe I set my eye relief on that 100% perfect when I reviewed that many, many moons ago. I have since ensured that all of my setups are as perfect as possible before I go ahead and send them out the door. As far as a comparison between these two, the striker comes in about 17.9 ounces, the exact same length, and the field of view claims to be much larger at 1x at 120 feet, but again, I could not find the exact number at 6x. As far as the exit people, it's 11.4 to 4 as opposed to 10.4, so it is much better on the striker down low, but on top, again, it is basically the exact same. As far as the eye relief, the Delta claims to have a variable eye relief of 3.4 to 4 inches, which is not really the end of the world, because once you find exactly where you need to be, you're going to be fine with it. I think when an eye relief is set in a varying distance, I think that also correlates to a larger eye box because you can choke up on it or pull away from it if you had to whereas some other scopes like the optica where it's set 3.9 inches or at least that's what they tell you it is it's more or less maybe this is all speculation I, I don't know for sure but it might just mean that that's where it's set to and that's just how it's going to be and you might suffer from you know possible distortion to the image as a result my last comparison is going to be with the trijicon tr25 this is an LPVO that I would love to own, but have nothing to throw it on. Very similar to the PST Gen 2. There's something that keeps on drawing me to the TR-25. It's so simple. There are so few controls on it. Yes, it's got tritium and fiber optics as opposed to a battery and an LED emitter. And basically all the controls are more or less the same, but it just seems like a very simple optic, especially here with a triangle post like this. Very, very simple. Would I go with the triangle post? No. I believe I prefer the German number four, or I'd probably go with like a mil dot, something a little bit a little bit more capable for me. I don't like the post on the TR-25 like this because if you have to hold over on something and look for your splash, that big post might obscure a lot of your splash. All right, I've got to pull myself in off that tangent. Glass-wise, has to go to the TR-25. It is exceptional. In fact, almost everything goes to the TR-25. It might be $400 more expensive than the Optica. And that's a lot of money. But if you like what the TR-25 has to offer, you're going to be willing to spend that price day in, day out. As far as the weight goes, the TR-25 comes in around 19 ounces, so a little bit lighter than the Optica. It's also an inch longer, but I think that helps with the optics inside, because the optics on it really are beautiful, especially the center. The center is absolutely gorgeous. The outside might get a little bit soft at varying distances, like you see here, focusing on a 200-yard steel plate, as opposed to the 100-yard paper that you see at 6 o'clock. But the field of view on the TR-25 is massive. At 1x, it's 120 feet to 20 feet. Contrast that for the last time with the Miopta, which is 109.5 to 18.9 feet. It doesn't sound like a lot, but you're talking about 5 to 10%, and that does really add up. As far as the exit pupil, the Trijicon is also huge at 1x, 12 millimeter. But then at the maximum, 4.1 millimeter claimed. And again, it's got a fixed eye relief of 3.9 inches, which is the exact same as the Optica. The view looking through the TR-25 is massive. But so is the Optica, believe it or not. But we do see a lot less of the scope body with the TR-25. I would probably pony up and go with the TR-25, primarily because I don't have a need for it or a use for it, but I really want one to the point where I'm trying to justify buying one. But like, what do I sell to get it, and is it really going to be worth it? Maybe one day when I have unlimited funds, I will go ahead and buy one. But until that time, I'm going to be happy with what I have, which is still a, a fair amount of glass on my shelf that I like to incorporate in these side-by-side -side comparisons, especially when I have the luxury of time. But anyway, between these two, I would pony up and go with the TR-25. And that's basically going to be it for these comparisons. I, I, I don't know if I can give you any more without this video being an hour long. And there it is, folks. My complete review of the Miopta Optica 6 1-6x24 second focal plane LPVO featuring the 223RD BDC reticle. 
I wanted to love this, I'm not gonna lie. I had great experience, I've had great experiences, but that was only down to one Miopta, and that was the 3 to 18 by 50 and the 3 to 18 by 56. Those two both performed exceptionally well. I did prefer the 50 over the 56 because the image seemed a little bit more stable. And, uh, well, uh, it's something that I have thousands of rounds through and not a single hiccup. It's really well built. The controls on it are all exceptional. And I was hoping to have everything that the 3 to 18 is into this 1 to 6. And even, even more so, again, because it's second focal plane as opposed to first focal plane, the optics in this scope should perform better because they're technically doing less, if that makes sense. Unfortunately, I was let down. Everything about this scope physically is perfect, especially for the price. For 600 bucks, this thing competes with the best of them. In fact, I prefer all the physical controls on this scope compared to every other scope that we just looked at in the side-by-side -side comparisons. Yes, even the TR-25. The turrets on the TR-25 are good. They're, they're serviceable, but I prefer the turrets on this, the Optica. There, there aren't many LPVOs that I could think of, actually, now that I... If I really put thought into it, there are very few other optics in general that have the feature set like this Optica 6 that feel and function as good as they do. They really are sublime. But sometimes that's not enough. Sharpness, clarity, brightness to the image are all there, but I can't get over that fisheye. At 1x... It really is something that you were going to notice and something that you're going to have a hard time looking past. At 2x even, still, when it should be basically gone, it's still there. The worst other scopes that I've had with fisheye, usually one half, one quarter, it's mostly cleared up. But by two, it's always usually fine. But with this, it just didn't seem to be the case. And I noticed it immediately. The second I held it up to my eye in my apartment, I go, what the hell is this all about? I thought maybe I had the eyepiece set wrong. But no amount of tweaking, no amount of doing anything made it any better. Again, though, this is a serving size of one. For all I know, if I was to get 10 of these side by side, all 10 of them would be different. Or maybe all 10 of them would be the same. One would hope, one would think, that logically speaking, if these are mass-produced scopes, they should be down to a science. So if you pick up one or 101 and everything in between, they should all be identical. But I can't say for sure because I don't have that luxury. All I can say is that the owner of this scope loves this scope and abuses it. This thing had battle scars all over it from being used properly. And that is a testament to its overall build quality. This was not a garage queen that had problems. It was a usable scope that goes on his go-to rifle and gets the ever-loving shit beat out of it. And it performed great in that regard. And for that, for many of you, that's going to be far more important than just a little bit of fisheye. I completely understand and get that. But if I can get a scope that can perform exceptionally well and be battle-proven, battle-proven, uh two gun match proven and be less expensive and have better optical quality at 1x then i'm going to go with that and actually i did i went with the pst gen 2 bought it off my friend that thing's beat up it's got dents everywhere it's got scars everywhere but the thing doesn't skip a beat and that is why i went with it track record on those is fantastic optically they're freaking awesome they're just a little bit heavy and the reticles might be a little bit weak but with this, again, you have your choice of reticles if you could find them. Uh, is this something overall that I could recommend to put a nail in this coffin? I have a really hard time recommending it. If you value really awesome controls, a scope that is, it should be made in the U.S. I believe these are made in Florida using European components. But don't quote me on that. But that's everything, everything that has led me to that conclusion is what I've been able to find online. And Miopta never returned any of my emails that I've sent them to try to get scopes from them. So I'll, I will, I'll never get an answer from them probably, unfortunately. But if you're someone that values a scope that has exceptional build quality, more than likely made in the U.S. with European controls, and can be used and abused and probably thrive, even at the cost of a little bit of fisheye, then this is a scope that I would recommend for you. For everybody else, I made a ton of other comparisons with scopes that cost half the price of this and almost double the price of this. So use that as a guide to figure out what's going to be ideal for you.
For everybody else, if you're just here listening to listen to my sweet, sultry voice, I really greatly appreciate it. And thank you very, very much. But for all of you, thank you all very much for watching. And as always, I'll see you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand. But you could still help by using my affiliate links in the description below and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.